this is Vanessa and here is Azin is for you. To reduce rabies, activists transform plastic waste into tiny homes. For the past two months, Indonesia-based environment activist Gary Benjigib has been living in a 12 square meter tiny house constructed from 35,000 plastic bags sourced from Bali's polluted rivers. Benjigib said the interior and furniture in the house, such as bed frame and kitchen cabinets, were also fully made of plastic cups and straws waste. Welcome you guys to my recycled tiny home, all made from 35,000 plastic bags. Um, you know, on the outside, you've seen the plastics, but really in the interior, we're living in a 12 meter squared tiny living, uh, fully equipped with a king size bed, a kitchen, and a full on bathroom. Um, you know, I decided that, you know, why not recycle the plastics that we're collecting from the rivers and really show what we can do with it. So this has been a personal project, but really experiments that we can really make amazing things out of trash. After completing his first house made of recycled plastics, Benjikip is looking to further develop the house model and mass produce it for natural disaster victims. Local centuries, however, are optimistic that Bali is moving in the right direction. The 28-year-old started a movement Sungai Watch to clean up clogged rivers, littered beaches and illegal trash dumping sites around Bali and Java in an effort to stop trash from going into the ocean. Local government has made efforts in reducing plastic waste in the resort island, such as through banning plastic bags in supermarkets. Plastic pollution threatens the extinction of marine species and microplastics have now become part of the food chain, with environmental groups warning of severe consequences for life and the planet. Former United Nations Secretary General meets Myanmar's ruling general to promote peace. Media reported former Secretary General of the United Nations Ban Ki moon met Myanmar's military ruler, part of a trip aimed at promoting peace in a country wrecked by conflict since a coup two years ago. Myanmar has been in crisis since the military ousted Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government in February 2021. According to state media, Ban made the surprise visit late on Sunday, April 23. He met Junta Chief Ming Oholeng in the capital Napidiao, pro military news portal NP News reported. Ban made multiple trips to Myanmar with the UN before and after the country's transition in 2011, away from five decades of military rule, supporting sweeping political and economic reforms that were later unraveled by the coup. Ban was representing the elders, a group of former international leaders established by the late Nelson Mandela to work for peace, human rights and justice. Indonesian residents leave their home after earthquake. Residents in the west of Indonesia's Sumatra Island began brisk evacuations after a magnitude 7.3 earthquake struck, triggering a tsunami warning for around two hours. People in Padang, the capital of West Sumatra, rode on motorcycles in the early hours of the morning with minimal belongings and headed for safe zones in the area. The tsunami warning asking local authorities to immediately instruct residents of affected area to move away from shores has since been lifted. Indonesia's geophysics agency, BMKG data showed the quake at a depth of 84 kilometers or 52.2 miles hit at about 3 a.m. local time. A number of aftershocks were detected later and one registered 5 magnitude. Church Prime Minister meets Vietnamese counterpart in Hanoi to boost ties in various sectors. Czech Prime Minister Peter Fiala met his Vietnamese counterpart in Hanoi as part of his three-day official visit to boost ties with the Southeast Asian nation. <music> Vietnamese Prime Minister Pan Minh Chin received Fiala outside the presidential palace with a welcoming ceremony before the two leaders held talks and witnessed the signing of bilateral pacts. The two nations pledged to strengthen cooperation in various sectors, including education, investment, and law enforcement.
According to Vietnamese state media, Fiala was accompanied by a delegation of representatives from 30 church companies in the fields of engineering, aviation, weapon, and technology. Fire hit shopping mall in Makassar, Indonesia. Local authorities and the mall operator said fire engulfed parts of the shopping mall in Indonesia's Makassar with no casualties reported. According to witnesses' media reports and social media footage, the fire broke out on the second floor of the Trans Studio Makassar Mall at around 6 p.m. local time, sending panicked shoppers scrambling out of the building. Max Kembuan, the chief executive of the mall, told writers on the phone that all visitors were cleared out of the building and there were no casualties. The shopping mall was packed with visitors during Indonesia's one-week-long Eid holiday when the incident happened. Indian rocket launcher sends the Singapore satellites into space. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, India successfully zero. launched a rocket carrying two Singaporean satellites into space from its spaceport in Sri Harikota. ISRO chief, ISRO chief, as Somanat said, the PSLV had once again demonstrated its reliability and aptitude for this type of mission. The PSLV has placed both the satellites, uh, Telios 2 and Lumlight, in the intended orbit. This was a mission towards east direction and the inclination is uh, very small, 9.99 degrees, very precise. And the PSL in its 57th mission has once again demonstrated its high reliability and uh, its suitability for commercial missions of this class. In its 57 mission, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, C-55, blasted off from the Satish Dawan Space Center with Singapore's Telios 2 as primary satellite and Lumlight 4 as a co-passenger satellite at 2.19 p.m. local time. The satellites weigh about 741 kg and 16 kg respectively. According to the Indian Space Research Organization, the Telios 2 will be used to support the satellite imagery requirements of various agencies within the Singapore government, while the Lumlight 4 aims to augment the country's e-navigation maritime safety and benefit the global shipping community. Vincent wins International Series Vietnam Golf. Zimbabwe's Kieran Vincent won his first ever Asian Tour of Golf event at the International Series Vietnam. Vincent, who is his second year as a professional, had been in the top four since round two. Yeah! He shot at 6 under par 66 in the fourth and final round to go 19 under for the victory at KN Golf Links in Cameron. Vincent finished one shot ahead of India's Anirban Lahiri and Kevin Yuan of Australia. Japan's Takumi Kanai, who led going into the final round, finished joint fourth on 16 under after a 1 over par 73 in the fourth round. Talent Jazz Janewa Tananon, who led after the second round, also finished on the 16 under after the 2 under par 70. The tour moves to the Nam Seoul Country Club in South Korea next for the 42nd GS Caltex Makyung Open Golf Championship from May 4 to 7, 2023. Philippines and China commit to working on resolving differences. The Philippines and China pledged to work together to resolve their maritime differences in the South China Sea, where the two have competing claims and to deepen bilateral ties. Our leaders have agreed that our differences in the West Philippine Sea are not the sum total of our relations. These differences should not prevent us from seeking ways of managing them effectively, especially with respect to the enjoyment of rights of Filipinos, especially fishermen or fisher folk, whose livelihood and general well-being uh, are determined by are undermined by incidents and uh, actions in the West Philippine Sea. Philippine Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo said Manila's relations with Beijing are more than just their differences over the South China Sea as he began talks with his Chinese counterpart, Xingang, in Manila. 
In response, Shin said China was ready to work with the Philippines to implement a consensus between the two countries and properly resolve differences, and adding that doing so will help promote peace and stability of the region and the world. Japanese celebrate LGBTQ progress but demand marriage rights before G7. Cheering flag-waving crowds gather in Tokyo for the first full Rainbow Pride Parade in four years celebrating advances in LGBTQ rights but demanding Japan join other advanced nations in illegally recognizing same-sex marriage. Organizers estimated 10,000 people marched in Sunday's parade in the downtown Shibuya district after a scaled-down version last year during the COVID-19 pandemic. Activist group Marriage for All Japan opened a booth at the Rainbow Pride Festival venue and encouraged visitors to send postcards to parliament representatives demanding recognitions of same-sex marriage. Ambassadors from several countries, including U.S. Ambassador Ram Emanuel, spoke at a stage event encouraging Japan to change its marriage laws. South Korean evacuees from Sudan land in Saudi Arabia. Footage showed people stepping out of a plane greeted by military personnel handing out flowers and candy. South Korean said it had evacuated 28 of the country's citizens from Sudan in a military aircraft. The eruption of violence between the military and the rapid support forces, RSF paramilitary group on April 15 has killed at least 427 people, knocked out hospitals and other services, and turned residential areas into war zones. Tens of thousands of people, including Sudanese and citizens from neighboring countries, have fled in the past few days, including to Egypt, Chad, and South Sudan, despite instability and difficult living conditions there. Several nations, including Canada, France, Poland, Switzerland, and the United States, have halted the embassy operations until further notice. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice weekend. Stay safe and stay healthy. We will see you soon.